I'm going to practice quick decision making for Wright Patterson Mahjong by doing an exercise I call Charleston Sprints. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do five laps. Laps one, three, and five will be the sprints. Laps two and four will be set up. My hope is to make decisions in under two minutes. Here's my smartphone. We're going to use this as a stopwatch. Let's roll to see who is prevailing east. And let's roll to see which seat we're in. I rolled six. Six would be south. So we're in south seat and east is prevailing. Pair, 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 two, three, three, Let's see, three, three, two. I'm thinking little chows or double numbers and number hand. Let's pass these three. There's a four. West. Let's keep the west because the number hands use winds and dragons. There's a three and a five, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's see, six, three, three, two, three, two, three, all the threes, try numbers, four, five, six. Let's try for a number hand lap. Okay, we ended up with a west and a south for a number hand here. I'm thinking either double numbers with two, three, or try numbers with threes. So let me read number hands to you. We have either, we have between four and five discards, but I don't think that's bad for a forced hand. And these would be double, double limit hands. Double numbers is on page 22, number 38. Two pungs of the same number in two suits with a pair of Windsor Dragons. So here we have a pair of winds and we have two, three, we need a two dot or a two bam for double numbers. Two, three, two, three. The other option would be try numbers. Try numbers is pungs of the same number in three suits, threes, crack, dot, bam. And then a pung and a pair wins, pung, and then we just need to pair one of these up. I think probably try numbers is going to be the best. So we have about five discards either way. Okay, let's go to the next one. This time, let's say that prevailing is south. And this time, let's say we're in west seat. West seat, south round. Okay, I think we should play BAMs with honors or all terminals and honors, ones, nines. Let's throw these three and see what we get. There's a BAM. So let's see, two, eight, two, three, eight. I'm thinking Betty. Let's give up the nine. Pass these. You can't use terminals with Betty. Okay, there's a white dragon and a west. So we have news with dragons. Let's pass one blind. Okay, we have probably three discards for Betty. Betty is a pair hand, number eight on page 17. 
three pairs in one suit, no terminals with seven odd honors and one honor paired. There's our pair. We just need a south and then we need to pair one or two of these up. We really have probably just two discards. That was a really good Charleston, I think. I did pass blind in here. If you want to know about passing blind, the rules for that are on page nine. Number 15. In the second sentence, third sentence, really. On the last pass of the Charleston, any or all of the three tiles may be passed blind, but you must state how many you are passing blind, pick up that number of tiles and pass them on. You may look at your blind pass, but you cannot change the tiles after looking at them. I disagree with that rule. Otherwise, why would they call it passing blind? If you're passing blind, don't look, don't peek, just pass blind. Okay, we're gonna do one more. I rolled a six for prevailing. So that would be south. And let's say that we are in seat eight, nine, 10, 11 is west. West seat, south is prevailing. Pair of ones, pair of sevens, one, five, seven, nine. Little one five seven nine. Little one five seven nine is okay. I'll read it later. Uh, or bams. Let's go ahead and pass these three. I'm thinking little one five seven nine. No keepers. Or bams. We could maybe switch to bams. There's a bam. We got a one though. I think we should stick with it. Right here. Oof, oof. Okay, lap. So I would give up the BAMs, hold those. Little one, five, seven, nine. Let me read that to you. We have two pair and a lot of representation there. This is a mixed suit hand on page 23, number 50. One pung each of one, five, seven, nine with a pair of either ones or nines. Here's a one, five, we've got options, seven, nine, and then a pair of either ones or nines. So we have no gaps. I would stick with this. I think I would hold these in case honors come in, all terminals and honors and sacrifice these. So I'd say we probably have four to five discards here. I don't think that was too bad though. Let's see how things went with timing. Sprint one, one minute, 20 seconds. Sprint two, one minute, four seconds. Sprint three, one minute, four seconds. So I made it in under two minutes, but what does that mean? These are the reasons why I think this is a good exercise. Number one, it builds your confidence making quick decisions. Number two, it helps to desensitize you from the pressure of making quick decisions, especially if you play with more skilled players or more advanced players in your group. Number three, if you play in tournaments, it desensitizes you from playing against a clock because you're on timed games. Number four, it's fun. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. 
Between now and the next Charleston Sprints for Wright-Patterson Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers. <laughs>